Greetings again everyone, TrekWorks with you. Well, we mentioned at the end of our last video on the Defiant buildup that we were going to be starting on another kit here, and here is the AMT Round 2 re-release version of the Star Trek Vulcan Shuttle Ciroc. And this is a nice little model kit. I mentioned that we're going to be doing this with some lighting. We're going to be building it up here, as seen on the back as the Federation version with the NCC-1701 markings on it. And uh, this is going to be a great little kit. I'll take this out of the box now and come back and show you uh, the parts laid out and the instructions and decal sheet. And we'll talk a little bit about what we plan on doing to modify this to get it ready for lighting. Be right back with that in a second. We'll see you then. Okay, everybody. Well, let's start off with a little look at the instruction sheet for the model here. And as you can see, it's a basic fold-out sheet. And we have a standard procedure if you're used to building Star Trek model kits. We can see that we start off with the assembly of the warp engines. We've got the lower half here that connects to the upper area with the cruise quarters. And we can see here that we've got mention of a unique mounting system for this. What's included with this kit are a couple of very, very small magnets. They're small, but they're really, really strong. And they install in these panels here. And what that allows you to do, basically, is uh, once the model is all finished up, you have the ability to, to detach the upper half from the lower half and display it the way you would like. So that's a nice little feature. I don't believe that that was included in the earlier AMT Ertl uh, release of this kit. Uh, probably starting in around, I don't know, 79, 1980, somewhere there. So that's kind of a nice feature that Round 2 has added to this to make it uh, kind of optional for how you want to display it. And what my plan is, basically, is uh, I want to light this upper area, uh, light the, the entire model, actually, the warp engines and the, and the cruise quarters up here. And so what I'm going to be doing on this one is um, installing some small connector tabs here at the bottom on this bottom plate and some more on the top of this plate here that will allow... Um, Basically, what we'll be able to do is when I attach and detach uh, the uh, the model, I'll still be able to do that, and I'll still be able to have my lighting here. Now, the lighting won't be able to come on when it's separated unless I put some type of a different independent power source in there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get into all that, but the lighting will be installed in that, and basically, whenever I attach it onto this, the lighting will basically come on because we'll be connecting power from the bottom half of the model up into this area here. So that's going to be kind of a fun little thing to do on this one. And then moving on here, we see that uh, more of the assembly, it's pretty straightforward. Again, we see the uh, assembled warp engines connecting to the intermediate section here, and then the top area, the cruise quarters all coming together and being mounted on the stand. And finally, we see some uh, a, a paint guide here, which gives some reference to certain colors to be applied in certain spots. And uh, on the back, we have a very complex and detailed decal application guide. That's probably the, the highlight of this entire model is the decals that are included. It's quite a fantastic set that, as we mentioned earlier, it allows you to build either the Vulcan version or the Federation version. And you can see there's, they're quite specific and quite detailed as far as the placement goes. Quite a bit of work to do on the decaling side now. We're going to be really careful with that. And we're going to cut our decals out uh, nice and tight, and we're going to make sure that uh, we kind of test fit some of them. And we're going to see how that's going to work, and we're going to use some decal bonding agent on that to make sure they all lay down nice and flat. One of our guys at uh, Sci-Fi Model Action, Jamar, he just recently completed a step-by-step uh, -step build up log for us over there. If you guys want to stop by and check that out if you haven't seen it, he gives some really nice detail. He built the Vulcan version of it, complete with weathering and all, and it turned out really, really nice. And uh, he gives you a step-by-step -step guide on that. And uh, his completed model is just fantastic, so I hope you guys will check that out. And I'll show you a little bit about the uh, show you a little bit of the decals here. Now, again, we see that round two has included these nice wax paper backings on there to protect the decals when they're on the shelf while the model sits on the shelf, or if you have it in storage, they don't get all scuffed up from being shuffled around. So that's a nice touch. And we see here that we've got a really, really beautiful set of decals for this. Again, it's probably the highlight of the model. All these decals that are included uh, allow you to do both versions of the ship and it gives you the ability to add in all these panel details. In the past, you would have had to paint all this on to get the look correct, and so this is really, really a nice set. And again, it's it's complex, as Jamar points out in some of his uh, logs there on his on his build series for this. Uh, there's there's a few issues with some of the decal work, and again, we'll uh, learning from some of what he did there. We'll work with that, and hopefully, we'll get ours to turn out as well. And we'll take you through that step by step as we go. Again, making re really sure that we're getting everything to lay down nice and flat on that and then sealing them all up nice so they last. So again, nice set of decals and we have, since I'll be doing the Federation version, we have the NCC-1701 markings and uh, various names we can put on that. We'll probably use the 
maybe the Tapao or something like that, but uh, very, very cool stuff. And uh, actually, we won't use the, yeah, we won't use the Tapao. We'll use this, I guess there's one called the Herschel or the Haley. Uh, yeah, the Haley has got the actual Enterprise uh, number below that, so that's probably the one we'll go with. But you've got options there, whatever you choose to do. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And let me slide some of the parts over here now for you. And we'll see what we've got to do to make some modifications to this model to do some lighting on it. Now again, I mentioned we're going to be using the Don's Lighting, Don's Lighting and Magic uh, parts, otherwise known as DLM. And uh, we'll be showing you what that actual kit looks like in the next uh, segment of this video build-up series when we get started on the actual assembly. But for now, I'll show you a little bit of what we're going to talk about on doing modifications. As you can see, on these flux chiller grills here, they are solid and they're molded into the uh, the warp engine here. And you've also got this Bassard collector here at the front. So basically what is required is we've got to cut this area out and this small area here. There are a couple other small areas on the model that need to be cut out for some other clear panels that go on, but these are pretty much the major ones. And so we'll be doing a series of small drill holes along these areas here, and then we'll come back and we'll cut that out with a hobby knife, and then we'll carefully, use a, using a file and some sanding paper, go down and clear those all out and make it to where our, our grills fit in there just right. So I'll take you through that whole process doing the assembly. And here we see the uh, upper and lower uh, parts of this uh, lower section here where the warp engines connect to. We've got the upper cruise quarters here. I'll point out on the cruise quarters here that there are windows, these sort of pair of elongated windows on each side that are going, going to need to be cut out. So I'll have to make sure I get those nice and straight and make sure that they're both the same size. We're, we're actually going to have to add those in ourselves. And I believe there's maybe one or two more. We'll probably be doing a single LED uh, blinking marker on this along with the static lighting just to give it a little bit of animation and add to the realism of it. And that will again be set up to where when it attaches on here, uh, it'll power on. If I decide to take it off, we'll lose the power, but I still have the ability to do that. So that's going to be a fun little thing. And uh, just kind of figuring out how to work that in. It shouldn't be too difficult. And we've got some other small little decal, detail parts here, as you can see. But again, not a very complicated model. So it's going to be a fun one to build, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And this will hopefully carry me over for a little bit, and then we may have time in between that before. I'm sure a lot of you guys like me are anxiously awaiting the new 1350. I want to take the time to again mention uh, my thanks from from myself and Sci-Fi Model Action, the board over there for Model Man Tom's efforts to get that to us. Uh, we were the first out there to have it. It was it was really nice. Our, our guys were really excited about seeing that. A lot of guys are really worked up about getting their hands on that and building that kit. The accessory packs that are going to be included is just going to be a fantastic model. It's going to keep a lot of us very busy for a long time. I'm really excited to see all the different creations and ideas that people are going to get when they uh, begin to uh, do builds of these and show them to the rest of us. It's going to be really exciting. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So again, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. On our next video, we're going to be coming back with the assembly, the start of the assembly on this. And we're going to be getting busy again over at the uh, other channel, over at Sci-Fi Model Action. You guys remember I started on the Mobius Sea View, and uh, we just had to take a little break here during the summer. It just got too hot out in the shop to work, but I'm going to be back at it full swing here, and we'll get that one cranked up again and move forward. We're pretty excited about that. Stay tuned here at the end. I've got a little special treat for you modelers out there, and we'll take you through that, and then we'll, uh, we'll sign off, and we'll be, we'll be back for the next video after that. So hope you guys enjoyed. Until then, happy modeling, everyone. Okay, guys. Well, before I signed off here today, I thought I'd give you guys a quick look at the shelf that sits behind my workbench here and my big pile of plastic a lot of these um, models that you're seeing here are models that are going to be upcoming here over at Trekworks in the next few months over the winter and uh, over at Sci-Fi Model Action Channel as well you guys remember the Sea View I've been working there we're going to be getting back to that one in the next week or so but uh, yeah there's quite a few uh, fun little projects sitting here some of these I've got double kits of are going to be for redos for I got a couple friends here locally that have talked me into uh, building them a kit and uh, so I'm going to be doing a couple of those for these guys and uh, depending on how they turn out they may get the original they may get the second one we'll have to kind of wait and see on that but uh, I've got this uh, uh, original motion picture version of the Katinga Klingon Cruiser I've always wanted to do that one that's uh, the, the, the darker more battle worn paint scheme they had on that ship and then there are some nice aftermarket parts available out there now for um, making that model a little bit, little bit more accurate so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, some more stuff at Sci-Fi Model Action. We've got the uh, 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 
uh, original monogram Battlestar Galactic. I'm really excited about building this one. I know it's not accurate and it's considered kind of cheesy by purists, but I think with a little bit of lighting and some weathering and uh, maybe doing some work to cut out the sides on these uh, these launch bays here and kind of open that up and give it some lighting effect in there, I think it's gonna, I think it'll pass. So I'm I'm looking forward to that one. I've always really really liked that ship. Um, We've got a couple more from the updated Battlestar Galactica series. The Viper Mark II will light that one, and we'll uh, do a build-up of this one as well. I'll point out that there's a really nice uh, couple of companies out there now that make nice lighting kits for this uh, uh, Cylon Raider and the uh, Viper. The Cylon Raider one's really cool. It features a nice uh, kind of oscillating red eye there and the firing cannon effect, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Here we've got the... Uh, uh, for Trekworks, we've got the original uh, Polar Lights uh, 1 1000 scale refit with the nice Aztecs. I've had a few requests to build up that one, so we'll get to that one down the road here in a little bit. And then we've got the uh, 1 1000 scale TOS version, which I'm going to be doing a build up of a smaller version of the Constellation, uh, kind of staying a lot closer to the, uh, the accurate version that we saw on the original series versus the one that I took a few liberties on. And I'm actually going to set this up as a little bit of a diorama. I found a nice uh, kind of uh, resin model of the uh, Doomsday Machine. It's not exactly in scale, but it's a really nice uh, version. I found it at Federation Models. It's around 9 inches long, but it's a really, really accurate version of it. I've never seen one that looked quite that good, so I'm going to be doing kind of a little diorama build-up with that and uh, some nice lighting effects on that and a nice uh, stand to mount it on. So that'll be fun. We've got some oldies down here. This is the original uh, 66, um, actually 67 release of the uh, Klingon Battle Cruiser with lights and the original 66 Enterprise down there with lights. Probably never build those, but I just like to keep them around laying here. I like to look at them, and they're just great old classic kits. Some of the more, some more stuff for sci-fi model action. we got the Flying Sub, which uh, that model kit features a detailed interior. We're going to do lighting on that. We've got the uh, uh, classic... War of the Worlds uh, Martian War Machine. I've got a uh, Voodoo FX lighting kit for that one as well to do some lighting on that for sci-fi model action. And uh, We've got the 350 here. This is the uh, original kit. I bought this kit when it came out brand new and you can see the cover is already starting to fade a little bit. It's just getting old and I just held on to it for a long time because I've wanted to uh, uh, work on my painting skills and things like that over time and get ready to do uh, I want to do my actual own uh, painted on Aztecing on this one. I've been working uh, probably over the last five or six months trying to figure out a technique for um, doing airbrushing on that with translucent pearlescent colors to give it that nice rainbow effect that we saw on the film. And uh, so I'll be doing that one. That'll probably be after, uh, I know, like I mentioned earlier, we're all chomping at the bit for the 1350 Classic Enterprise to come out. So I'll be doing that one first, but sometime over the winter I'm going to get to that refit. And that one's going to be great. And uh, again, a couple of these models I've got doubles of here to uh, uh, build for a couple friends of mine here locally. So, But uh, yeah, I've probably got half again this many models in a closet and that's inside the house. They're all packed in there really tight. And as I start going through some of these, I'll be bringing some of those out. And, and uh, we got a pretty good source of plastic for quite some time here. So I just thought I'd give you guys a look at that. And um, anyway, the next video we come back at Trekworks will be back in action doing the uh, first part of the Vulcan shuttle and then we'll be going over to sci-fi model action and doing the continuing build of the sea fuel with the lights so hopefully you guys will check that out and uh, thanks again to everybody at sci-fi model action having a great time over there if you guys haven't checked it out stop on by you're all welcome we got a great bunch of people over there talking about models and having fun so we'll see you next time everybody and take care y'all